This video is brought to you by Ridge Products. More about them after the review. Uh, no spoilers, but things are switched here and there. And for the most part, outside of one big complaint that you had, you don't really sit there going, Ooh, I missed that. Welcome back, back Pop stars. stars. I'm Rizzo. I'm Benji. And today we're taking a brief break to review the 2023 remake of The Little Mermaid. Benji, are you a fan? Um, in case you haven't seen, <laughs> noticed. Yeah. yeah. This is, of course, a remake of the 1989 Little Mermaid. It's directed by Rob Marshall, musical veteran best known for Chicago, Into the Woods, and Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Quick question. Is that why on Stranger Tides has a mermaid in it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they hired him. The Little Mermaid's not one of my all-time favorites, the original, but I don't hate it. I have a respect for it. I like it. It's not one I rewatched a lot, but my expectations going in were less about the film itself and more just how much I've not really enjoyed most of the Disney remakes. Okay, so for me, Little Mermaid is hands down, undeniably, my favorite Disney movie. And I was terrified were. when they announced it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially once they announced, which of all people, you were like, how dare they change my little, my Ariel. They have a terrible track record. I was really worried when it got to mine because everybody in the previous remakes, they were like, that one was my favorite and I really hated it. And I was like, oh God. When they do the Little Mermaid, I'm screwed. Aladdin, <laughs> I'm looking at you still, Aladdin. I see, I didn't hate Aladdin. And I loathe that movie with a passion. <laughs> I was really just trying so hard not to be excited. You were. And there was just so much hype and press around it. And I was like, I know, guys, I know. I really hope it's good. Um, and I was so just, hesitant. I was really, I was just trying so hard not to get my hopes up because it was going to hurt so bad if it wasn't good. And? And? Well, I mean, you can guess. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. We actually really enjoyed the Little Mermaid remake. We did have some issues with it. Yeah, there, it wasn't a perfect movie, but overall, we really did enjoy it. I think a lot of people were hesitant about the realistic... The realistic characters? Yeah, the realistic versions of the sea creatures. Well, I are, loved it. Yeah. I think Sebastian is the cutest little sidekick I've ever seen. That's how people feel after seeing the movie. They're like, oh, they actually were really cute. Adorable. And I was like, yeah, I was like, that's what that's what crabs look like. That's what fish look like. Like, I don't expect them to be cartoony. Like, I don't expect a Sebastian that looks like he's, his head is prolapsed out of his body. Like, Every time I just... you use that word, it just upsets me. But yeah, when people were getting all up in arms about the character redesign, I think the both of us were just kind of like... Um, Sebastian was creepy beforehand. Yeah, like, Sebastian, I don't, if you think about it. Are you it. looking at that? looks like a tongue penis is sticking out. What is that? All right, let's just get into it and talk about what we liked and didn't like. Yeah. Les poissons, les poissons, how I love les poissons. Love to chop. Let's go ahead and start with some of the good things about it. Obviously, you know, to add to all the hype that's out there, Hallie was amazing. Halle Bailey did a phenomenal job. Her voice. Part of that world. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, breathtaking. Uh -huh. Took a took a lot of the air out of the audience that we uh -huh. went and saw it with. I um, cried every time she sang. <laughs> it was show stopping, and I think even beyond just the singing, she did a lot with very little. As the film progressed, I ended up liking her performance a lot more. I would still say there's a lot of iffiness surrounding how mermaids in particular were animated, and it was kind of hard to get past just the the stiffness, but as the movie kind of eased in, especially once she connected with Eric, yeah. I felt a lot more liveliness. Like pulled into the movie. Yeah. A lot more that. Yeah, I, I agree. I had that in my list of comments, but it did feel a little uncanny valley here and there with just the swimming and the way her hair moved. But overall, I was able to look past that. I mean, it didn't make me dislike the movie. No. <laughs> there were little bits, little sprinkle of things that made me think, oh, this might actually be good. There's a moment where she interacts with Flounder and the scene is blocked in a way where you get the most out of the fact that this is a tiny little fish interacting with a human-sized mermaid. It's quite adorable and the type of thing that you're not necessarily gonna get from an animated film. But there were a lot of moments like that that made me think, okay, you're actually taking advantage of this live action yeah. setting and presentation as opposed to, you know, just redoing it but boring. Lion King. Looking at you. Also, I really did enjoy the new songs, which I did not expect. I absolutely avoided every spoiler. I didn't watch the trailers too many times. But you watched a lot of reaction trailers to little girls seeing Little Mermaid. 
I literally cried so much watching little black girls see Halle Bailey as the Little Mermaid for the first time. Where are those tears, Benji? Ah, oh, they're not here. I have too much. <laughs> I have too much fun on this channel. Um, I definitely did not watch any performances. Did not listen to any of the music before I avoided as much of it as I could. And yes, when I heard it originally in the movie. I cried. I loved all the new songs. I was surprised that we got new songs. They fit very well. Um, you loved all the new songs? Well, I wasn't a huge fan of Eric. Eric's song. I <laughs> I felt like it was just kind of like, hey, bud, this isn't your movie. What's Sit going on with your torso, buddy? <laughs> You're just like flopping around like a goddamn fish out of water. I was like, he's a super handsome, amazing voice. I think it was great. I just think it was like, I I, I wish there was more done there, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Well, as someone who doesn't normally like musicals, that is kind of where I tuned out. I will say, though, one of the things I really enjoyed about this film, especially from the musical aspect, it reminded me a lot of Roger and Hammerstein's Cinderella, the specifically- Brandy Cinderella. That's specifically we, the Brandy Cinderella yeah. with Whitney Houston. Obviously, the race blind casting played into that and not just the casting of Halle Bailey, but more importantly, I felt like I was watching a classic ABC presentation of just a solid musical. Mm -hmm. It was not, um, oh, what's the word? Burn! Sorry. Sorry. No, <laughs> shut Overall, the movie took itself very seriously, very sincere, but it had fun with it. And it just felt like a good classic adaptation of like an old school musical, including the song that you leave to go to the bathroom while all the rest of the cast changes. Which would be Eric's song. Oh, I was like, <laughs> they don't need it. It's not a stage play, but those are there so the rest of the cast can get ready for yeah. the better stuff. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting take you know, on that's, that song. Again, they didn't need it in this, but hey, if you have to go to the bathroom, Eric's song, perfect time. Not perfect. It was a good song. <laughs> but if you have to go to the bathroom, which song are you going to pick? If you have to go to the bathroom, wait till the second time. Wear a diaper if you can't <laughs> okay. hold it. I wish that that could have been a duet somehow. I mentioned that to mm, you. Yes. I think that would have been a great moment to do something like that. But overall, the cast was amazing. There was a lot of laugh out loud funny moments that really kind of in their own way original to this story. Yeah. But also there was even beats from the original movie that in this context and the way that they played it were actually very funny. They subverted your expectations. I know specifically you got a laugh out of some of Melissa McCarthy's different deliveries of iconic lines. Yeah. As the film progressed, I felt we all became more comfortable with certain things not being exactly like the film itself. Your mileage may vary depending on how you like these actors. We rather enjoyed Aquafina as Scuttle. And of course, I think the MVP, again, was Lil Sebastian. Sebastian, let me tell you, I do not like Sebastian. I've always thought he was annoying. I didn't like Under the Sea because it was very much like Ariel's trying to get out of the water. She's got her crush and he's like, no, you stay here and I'm gonna sing about it and make it look fun. But it's not fun. But in this one, it was fun. Having rewatched the original, Sebastian is definitely kind of a killjoy. He's a killjoy. Even when he's participating, he's still kind of just like, you're like, okay, Sebastian. But but here he was he was very enjoyable. I mean, good job on that. David Diggs was a good choice. It was one of those where I went, I know he's a name, but he is a musician. Mm -hmm. He's a performer. I think he'll do good. And yeah, there was an odd little charm about this tiny crab. Again, crabs are cute. Yeah. Have you guys seen pictures of real life crabs? They're adorable. They do that little eye thing. It's cute. When real crabs are just like, they're just like Eek. You just think everything is cute though. So I don't know. I can't really, you think sharks and alligators are cute. So. Ooh, speaking of sharks, if there was one thing that I think fell flat on its face was mm. the opening shark chase. When I watched it again, by the way, seen this twice already. It's been out for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, like the movie, Benji? <laughs> I don't know. The, the shark chase the first time I was a little bit, it was hard to keep up with it. It was kind of dark. It, it wasn't as easy to keep track of as the OG, but watching it the second time, I was able to, I was like, okay, I, I see what's going on here. But my, I think the first time my eyes were kind of still adjusting to underwater. So well, it took a second. That's a good point and leads to one of my major complaints because overall I did really enjoy it. But one of my biggest complaints, and I have two, this movie is murky as hell. Mm. And there are times, I know you don't fully agree with me, but I watch it and especially compared to the original animation, which may or may not be a fair comparison, but 
even compared to other older movies that were shot on film like Pirates of the Caribbean. There is just something about the way modern films are shot nowadays where they all look the same. They're kind of murky, they're grayish, things blend together. Even th even when you're on land and you have characters in multicolored um, outfits, they can't help but just feel washed together. It was better as the film progressed, but definitely in the beginning, there were times where I'd be looking at the screen going, I'm not necessarily sure what I'm looking at and my eyes are a little bored. The underwater scenes just, blah, they looked, like Ursula's inner layer, awesome. But everything else, you're just kind of like, <laughs> what? Again, that's a me complaint. Your mileage, your mileage may vary on that. Interesting. I didn't have a problem with it. I thought it was plenty vibrant. I thought it was a good realistic adaptation. It wasn't cartoony, super bright, bright colors, but it also was colorful. Like, I think it was what you see when you go down into the ocean it's all clear blue waters with bright coral right and pretty mermaids again you know? it did win me over as the film progressed if there was one thing where i feel this film really um <laughs> stands on its own two legs pun oh. pun intended it's as soon as we get to land and ariel is interacting with eric yeah um, because their chemistry is Electric. I was just going to say is genuinely adorable. Yeah. It works. I think Halle Bailey does a lot with not even having her own voice. How they play off a lot of moments that we've seen before with a literal fish out of water. I think it's great. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, when she finally gets to touch a fire and see it burn, I uh -huh. was like, I think that's a really good payoff. I, that's, you know, part of what my notes were. Is right. I think a really good thing about this was a lot of the things that we were able to dive deeper into, mm -hmm. like Eric's background, a little bit of hers, which we kind of already knew, you know, there, see them meet and have a little bit more yeah. like conversations and relations. And it felt like, it felt less like we're answering questions you never cared about from the original and more like this is its own film and as its own film, these are this is how we would fill the in-betweens, the gaps. Yeah. As the film progressed, it there came a moment where I was thinking less and less about the original and mm -hmm. more as yeah. this makes sense for this world. There are clear moments where they deviate from the original film uh, no spoilers, but things are switched here and there. And for the most part, outside of one big complaint that you had, for the most part, you don't really sit there going, ooh, I missed that, ooh, yeah. I missed that, because in this world, in this movie, a lot of the decisions that are made are true to how this story would progress. Yeah, and it makes sense, and it, it still followed. I think they did a great job of balancing the new things that they were adding and adding depth and character and stuff versus the old things that they were bringing over and going, ah, we need this scene, we right. need that, like this line and that line, and they all they were together well. There were even certain rewrites from lyrics that taken out of context, I'm sure some really angry YouTuber will make a whole video about, but within context, you don't even notice it. Yeah. It works. I will say I did not notice that uh, they took the section out of Poor Unfortunate Souls. I did notice that they changed the kiss the girl lyric from there's one way to ask her if, you know, as in if right. she likes you, there's one way to ask her, which is to kiss her, which is no, it's not. And it says, use your words, boy, and ask her. See? So. The type of thing that obviously <laughs> stands out if you're used to the original, but in context of the movie itself, it doesn't feel virtue signaling. It yeah. just feels appropriate. Yeah. I know you have one more complaint. Let me lead into that with one of my own complaints. Go for it. Did not miss the opening number. Mm -hmm. However, I didn't care at all about the sisters. I know Simone Ashley, Bridgerton, Sex Ed. She's I thought there. she was going to do more. <laughs> I thought she was going to do more. They really were just nothing characters in this. And but on they were in the movie, in the OG too, so it's fine. But on top of it, the way they presented Trident and all of Atlantica felt less significant in this movie, especially towards the beginning. Uh, at the end, they kind of tie it together. But towards the beginning, and this is a problem I have with a lot of modern day movies, we're told a lot of what is important, but we're not shown it. For all I know, King Trident is the king of his five or six daughters. Seven. But we never seven, whatever. But we never really see him interact. You don't have that opening sweeping shot like the original where, where he he swims in. There's a crowd, yeah. they're like all hail King Trident. Uh in this one he shows up for his seven daughters and he's like, Ah, I'm king. And I'm like, for all I know, you could be a crazy man who just talks to <laughs> talking to strange mermaids. Actually talks to 
fish. That's a quote from the second movie. I just think you should, it, I want to know what this kingdom is. If you're going to be telling me this is I King agree. Triton, I want to see the kingdom. I agree. I would love to have seen a whole bunch of different mermaids in a whole kingdom. I would have loved to see a more castle castle. I did like that they made it a more natural structure, which is really cool, but I would have loved to have seen a little marriage of that natural structure right. with the golden palace and something that's a lot more grandiose because that looked like a little kind of did small. It look, did it look washed out and like it blended in with the rest of the environment? Well, it looked like it blended in because it blended in. That was the point is that it's natural and it is under the ocean. Like that's I can see That's what I'm saying. It. No, that's not what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. It's a little too it's a little yeah, hey hey I'm just saying what I'm saying you know what I'm saying I loved it and I have the songs on repeat and I have one unforgivable complaint and you guys y'all know what I'm about to say not really we did not get the magical dress reveal moment in the end of the movie I will never forgive them for this. I literally could not focus on the first kiss between Ariel and Eric because I was so mad that they put her back in that awkward looking blue dress that is now wet and ripped. I was very, very upset by this and I could not focus. Watching it the second time, I'm okay. But I am very disappointed that we did not get a really awesome updated version of that magical sparkly dress or any dress. They literally left her in that blue, like it's cute, but it's not princess for an entire movie. Great like dress. Don't leave her in the same dress for the whole movie. And they didn't even do anything different with her hair the whole time. It was just down with a little rag on it. And I'm just like, that's cute for like one scene. But let's, she's a princess. Why don't we just switch her into different clothes? She has the, dis the whole castle at her proposal, at her disposal. Am I allowed to talk now? I think so. I didn't care. <laughs> I liked it. Of course. I liked the costumes. The costumes were fine. I'm just like, it's a Disney movie. What's a Disney movie without a magical dress? And what is Ariel without a dress? Still a goddamn mermaid. You know what I'm talking about. In summary, you should see the movie for yourself. There are a lot of fun moments to discover that not even Benji and I can cover. Pay close attention to how these two end up falling in love because I believe that's probably one of the more sincere, beautifully realized aspects of the film. Watching those two actors interact and bounce off each other, it's just not something you're gonna get from an animated film. That alone is uh, worth the price of admission and justifies the existence of this remake. Ultimately, I did really love this movie. I think it was very well put together. I think it very much embodies and embraces the heart of the original, the story, the characters. I really did just enjoy watching it. Despite my my disappointment, I absolutely recommend. <sighs> Good job, guys. Oh, there's one thing I can't believe I didn't mention. Huh? Vanessa is still hot as hell. <sighs> Had her crush on the cartoon and the real one. I had a crush on the cartoon and the real one. She can shout at me all day. She did go full camp all out on her two scenes. Yeah. But her like screaming at Ariel was absolutely amazing. Shout at me, baby. <laughs> hey, daddy, you liking your Ridge wallet? Oh, I love it. But now I don't know what to do with my keys. That's a good thing Ridge is still having their Father's Day sale. Their biggest sale of the year. I have a Ridge key case for you. It securely holds up to six keys and keeps them from jingling. And since I ordered it with your Ridge wallet, I got 30% off my order. Here, dad. Thanks again, son. Clearly the best Father's Day gifts are Ridge products. Use my son's link, ridge.com slash pink podcast. And right now you can save up to 40% through June 15th. Once again, that's ridge.com slash pink popcast. That was our little review of the 2023 Halle Bailey Little Mermaid. Fantastic, fun for the whole family. Please go see it. I think when it comes to Disney Plus, I think we should do a reaction to it and we just should. watch through. Now we don't normally do these types of videos, but we just had too much, too much energy and too many thoughts swirling around in our head. So if you can, hey, give this video a like. Let us know that these little asides are are worth our while. Mm -hmm. Share it. Share it with someone you love. Share it with someone who's on the fence who doesn't want to go see Little Mermaid with you because they hate all remakes and let them know, hey, this gay and straight liked it. A gay and a straight review of <laughs> The Little Mermaid. A, a, a straight who normally does not like musicals. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, check out what's upcoming, and we'll be back in a bit with this actual movie to watch with you guys.
Uh, until then, I'm Rizzo. I'm Benji. Sweet dreams, pop stars. Keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep. My name is Finn Manuel Miranda, and I'm swimming around the ocean seas. And you cannot believe what I've seen. The Little Mermaid is just in my dreams. And if we could all work together in harmony, King Triton wouldn't be such a um, queen, be a meanie who wants to chastise his daughter. Reprimand his daughter. We have a, a word from from one of our Little Mermaids here. Powerful, powerful stuff.